Welcome to Your Vote Counts, jointly sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties and Capital Community Television. My name is Bea Epperson and I'm with the Voter Service Committee of the League of Women Voters. The League is a nonpartisan political organization that works to educate its members and the community about governmental issues. The League does not support or oppose candidates. In this program, we're hosting three candidates for Polk County Commissioner. The order of the opening statements was decided earlier by drawing straws. The following, opening, following the opening statement, statements, we will pose questions to the candidates and rotate their responses. Candidates were not given the questions in advance. Our candidates will each start with a two-minute opening statement to introduce themselves, tell of their relevant backgrounds, and discuss their top two priorities. The candidates running for Polk County Commissioner are Steve Milligan, Dan Clem, and Jennifer Wheeler. Steve Milligan, will you begin your introduction, your background, and your top two priorities? Sure. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for asking us here to introduce ourselves to the citizens. And I'm Steve Milligan, and I served eight years on the Mama City Council. Uh, in those eight years, we did a lot of economic development. We introduced high-speed fiber through a company called MyNet to Mammoth and Independence. Um, and we did a lot of different projects to help make sure that Mammoth was on its best uh, financial s setting. Um, currently, after I uh, left the seat of City Council, I'm on the Planning Commission for the City of Mammoth. I'm also the Chair of the Budget Committee. And then I'm the Chair of the Central School District Budget Committee. Ooh. So, <laughs> taking on a few, few tasks. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the two things that I'd like to see really done for Polk County is stabilizing the budget, uh, like we did in Monmouth, and to where we know that over the long run that we don't have to count on something, one thing in particular, that we build a big enough tax base to be solid. And then I really want to make sure that the priority of public safety stays in place so that we make sure to have the uh, public safety, sheriffs on the street, police on the street, so that uh, our community stays safe like it has been. All Thanks. right. Well, thank you. And Dan Clem, will you begin with your introduction, your background, and your top two priorities? Yes, thank you, B. I also would like to thank uh, League of Women Voters and Keppel, or CCTV, for hosting these discussions. It's really a part of one of the reasons I'm running for Polk County Commissioner. I believe that. Uh, better involvement with citizens, better access to county resources, more outreach from the county with all parts of Polk County in terms of the budget and what the priorities are is very important. So this is really sort of a good way to set the tone for um, how I believe Polk County can uh, better serve its citizens. I am a current city councilor uh, serving on Salem City Council representing West Salem for about the last nine and a half years. Uh, have raised a family uh, between my wife and I of uh, seven children and nine grandchildren in Polk County. I've been very involved in many community activities. Uh, I was chair of a citizens community transit task force, a member of the 9-11 uh, Field of Flag Steering Committee, and a host of other nonprofits to include Chemeketa Community College. I really believe that the volunteer base is the strength of not only Salem, but really that part of Salem that's in Polk County. Uh, after serving in the military for 21 years, um, I found that when I came back, I wanted to continue to serve my community. I've served in state government, city government, all aspects of city government, budget, land use planning, and a number of other areas. But the ability, seeing the linkage between transportation and economic development has been uh, an area that I've spent a lot of time developing. Uh, the potential third bridge, uh, highway improvements to, uh, improvements to Highway 22, but as well the understanding of that infrastructure and government's responsible for the infrastructure in being able to create opportunities for economic development. Those are really two of my priorities and that is working together uh, with all the businesses and, and governments <coughs> to create uh, better property values which will help balance our budget. Okay. Jennifer Wheeler, will you begin your introduction, your background, and your top two priorities? Yes, thank you. 
Um, my name is Jennifer Wheeler and I am Polk County Commissioner. I was appointed to that position a year ago um, after the tragic death of our friend Mike Propes. Um, at that time, uh, history was made in Polk County when I became the first woman commissioner in the history of Polk County. Um, and that, that is very uh, exciting to me. Um, I worked for the Board of Commissioners for 13 years before my appointment and the district attorney uh, for three years uh, prior to that. I have a, a bachelor's degree from Western Oregon University in criminal justice. I serve on a number of committees currently. I serve on the Association of Counties um, Public Safety Committee. I sit on the uh, Polk County Local Law Enforcement Executive Committee. I sit on the Local Public Safety Coordinating Council. I'm the uh, board liaison to emergency management. I, sit, I am a member of all of the chambers. I also currently sit on the um, service integration teams for Fall City, um, Perrydale, and West Salem. And there are, there are some others. My, my top priorities for the county um, are to maintain the high level of service that our citizens are used to, even with um, our diminishing revenues, and um, to promote current business and attract new business into our county. I think that um, <clears throat> it's important to um, support our local small family businesses, our local fa farming businesses, um, because they are the engine that drives our economy. Thank you. We'll begin with our questions now, and Dan <coughs> Clem, you'll go first uh, on the questions. Growth in West Salem has caused significant <coughs> backups in crossing the bridge to and from Salem. How would you address this and other transportation issues in Polk County considering that funding for a new bridge is not realistic right now? Sure. The belief that it's a West Salem problem is, is wrong. The data will show that over 50% of the traffic on the state highway, 22 bridges that cross from West Salem into downtown Salem, most of that traffic is from without of Salem. So we are really talking about Polk County traffic it's not realistic in terms of funding, but what's more not realistic, unrealistic, is that it will take the cooperation of the governments, the city of Salem, city of Kaiser, Marion and Polk counties, to first decide where the location is before you can get to cost. So I will tell you that a number of interim measures have been put in place to relieve the congestion to include uh, intersection widenings, new ramps, and so forth. Okay. <coughs> Jennifer Wheeler. Growth in West Salem has caused significant backups in crossing the bridge to and from West Salem, uh, from West Salem to Salem. How would you address this and other transportation issues in Polk County, considering that funding for a new bridge is not realistic right now? Well, I would continue to promote the safety improvements on Highway 22. Um, right now in the expressway management plan is the realignment um, of the Dokes Ferry um, at Highway 22 with uh, um, backage and frontage roads to protect the local businesses. Um, the eventual interchange at Highway 22 and 51 will be very important to the transportation system. And the idea behind that is that with the growth in West Salem, to bring that traffic down uh, through roads that would connect onto 22 and use that interchange and relieve some of that congestion um, that's occurring now in West Salem. I, I agree with Dan that it's not a Salem issue. It is a regional issue and, and that is important to not just the county but the state actually. To, it brings tourism into our county and it's, it's very important to our transportation system. Thank you. Okay, Steve Milligan. Growth in West Salem has caused significant backups in crossing the bridge to and from Salem. How would you address this and other transportation issues in Polk County, considering that funding for a new bridge is not realistic right now? For the immediate part of West Salem, um, as was experienced in an emergency situation a while back where one bridge was completely incapacitated, mm would be to find a way where you could make either bridge two-way so that you could move traffic back and forth. It wouldn't necessarily at that point relieve the congestion. The other is to continue the measures that are in place to widen intersections and traffic flow in West Salem itself so the traffic could move a little freer. The other piece would be in the interim to find maybe a more northern route to get people to I-5. 
out of North Polk County rather than bringing them through Salem, but get them up the road more towards Brooks and Jervis to get mm -hmm. to I-5. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number two, and Jennifer Wheeler, you'll go first on this one. Are there any needs in Polk County law enforcement and public safety that are not being met? If yes, what are your recommendations? I, I don't know that I would answer yes to that other than the budget shortfalls. We did have to cut some positions in law enforcement um, with our current, in our current budget process, but I believe that the system still stays strong. We have a sheriff that's committed to um, his job and to his force. We have a community corrections director who's um, committed to um, uh, keeping his uh, offenders accountable and direct supervision of those offenders. We have a strong juvenile uh, department and sanction court for our youth. Um, we have a jail that's the envy of, of other counties and always has room for people who choose to commit crimes in Polk County. We have a, a drug team that's active and, and up and running. Um, we will have to make decisions in the future. We will have to have um, community partners um, and discussions around how we're going to keep that system strong. Thank you. Steve, are there any needs in Polk County law enforcement and public safety that are not being met? And if yes, what are your recommendations? Well, I would say at this point, they're being met to the, about the minimum. Uh, if the current budget cycle keeps going like it is for the county and we lose more sheriff's officers, what's going to happen is the strain is going to be put on the cities. Uh, recently, I've had conversations with Sheriff Wolf and with Chief Talon about these and how um, as the county reduces its uh, workforce of sheriffs that it's going to increase the responsibility of the cities to cover some areas and so my thing is to bring together a public safety district real similar to the fire district uh, where we can have cost savings across the county <coughs> and actually increase the number of officers that are on the beat. All right, Dan Clem are there any needs in Polk County law enforcement and public safety that are not being met? And if yes, what are your recommendations? I believe with the growth that's happened not only in West Salem but throughout Polk County that there is a real need that's not being met by removing, going from three deputies on patrol at any one time for a county that's 750 square miles down to two deputies at any one point in time is a dangerous proposition, particularly with heroin drug on the uh, drug use on the increase. I will tell you also that I'm concerned that we have the, the best jail that folks have seen for years, but without a prosecutor to be able to back up uh, the arrests that uh, two deputies are making, um, you, you're essentially turning your jail into an in and out uh, jail. And so I'm very concerned that uh, the county commissioners currently and in the future would prioritize to make sure that we go no lower than the, the budget and how we spend money for FT to go no lower than the three deputies on patrol at any one point in time. And to make sure that we have, if we can't afford the prosecutor, then we work with Department of Justice or other entities to use a, have a prosecutor to prosecute the crimes. Steve, you'll start the next question. Regarding the adequacy and quality of current children and family programs in Polk County, are there areas you would improve as Co Polk County Commissioner? Quality of current children and family programs in Polk County. Sure. One of the programs that I've gotten the opportunity to see is Marion County's reentry initiative and how they work with people coming out of corrections. And that's a really successful program. Um, a 501c3 company that I'm helping put together um, is a mentoring service that would actually try and fill some of the gap. Some of the current mentoring services are designed to uh, utilize state or federal dollars. And what we wanted to do was create a 501c3 that would help people that were between the two, where um, they didn't have the state resources or that, but we could, we could do an outreach to them and help them to do more preemptive work where a lot of times the state funding requires them to do it only post-prison or, or um, certain criteria where we find the niche in between. All right. Dan, regarding the adequacy and quality of current children and family programs in Polk County, are there areas you would improve as Polk County Commissioner? 
Sure, B. Thank you. I serve on the Community Action Agency, which oversees the Head Start and many of the early childhood learning programs. Polk County has just now recently embarked on having its own programs, having previously relied upon Marion County to do that. I would continue to strengthen the Commission on on, on Families and Children as it starts, uh, is renamed as well in Polk County with more support for those programs, more uh, advocacy, but as well, we have just recently completed the Homelessness Connect uh, both in Dallas and in West Salem, and I believe that there's a strong uh, n amount of needs still not being met with the high numbers of folks unemployed. That really strikes at the stability of the family. We've got the family building blocks in West Salem, which has helped, and the mental health addictions clinic, but there's still much more that can be done. We still have, and we see uh, in these programs and events, too many, too many families still having needs such as health insurance. The new coordinated care organizations really needs county leadership. All right. Jennifer, regarding the adequacy and quality of current children and family programs in Polk County, are there areas you would improve as Polk County Commissioner? First of all, I've got to say that I, I disagree with Mr. Clem. Polk County Commission on Children and Families has been up and running and, and doing a great job for years. In fact, we are pioneers in the service integration model. I sit on three of the service integration teams and they're fabulous. Um, there are other uh, youth programs in the county, including the sanction court I talked about before. We have a new program through our uh, public health department that's uh, for teenagers to have a place to go where they feel that they can talk to people about whatever issues that uh, they are having and they don't have someone, um, an adult, uh, to, to speak with. We are very strong in our children's programs. There's always room for improvement and there's always room for new ideas, but Polk County Commission on Children and Families is a very, very well-run program with a, a board of community volunteers and they're strong and they're, they're good citizens and they, they care about our families and our youth in our, in our county. Mm -hmm. We're um, running out of time here and I'd, I'd like to get two more questions in, so I'm gonna ask you to shorten your answer to 30 seconds if you can on this next one. The Dallas area has been particularly hard hit with job losses during the economic downturn. Do you have specific suggestions to spur job growth in Polk County? And Dan, I'll go with you on that one. Meeting with uh, Dallas community leaders, I believe that the closure, the near closure of the plants there is a prime concern. The, uh, there's really gotta be a strong interaction between the county leaders and the community leaders, and, uh, and, and that involves the urban renewal, uh, renewal districts, and the incentives to create business. The, I do not see a strong relationship between the county and the city leaders in, in an overall economic development plan. Jennifer, the Dallas area has been particularly hard hit with job losses during this economic downturn. Do you have specific suggestions for job growth in Polk County? Once again, I disagree with Mr. Clem. Um, we have been working with the city uh, leaders in, in Dallas and as well as the people representatives from the governor's office in conversations about the warehouser building. Um, that building is a private, privately owned uh, industry and we don't have control over what they do with that property. We continue to um, uh, work with Travel Salem to on a regional website to, to bring people to our county um, from other areas of the state or even outside of the state. Um, I believe that we have a very strong working relationship with the city. Steve, same question. The Dallas area has been particularly hard hit with job losses during the economic downhurt, downturn. Do you have specific suggestions to spur job growth in Polk County? Well, having been one of the people who lost a job, although I don't live in Dallas, I live real close, um, I participated in uh, uh, WorkSource Oregon and the job growers programs. And what my suggestion would be is there are a lot of us that are out of work that range from executives to janitors, and it would be to bring us all together in a room and say, how can we put your resources back to work and let the people come up with some ideas. Okay, and last question, and Jennifer. What are the primary differences that set you apart from your opponent? I think the well, there's two primary. One is that I'm the first woman, and that's that's pretty obvious, I think. Um, the other is that I have a very well-established working relationship with the staff. 
um, from our county administrator to my two fellow commissioners, um, to our, our um, county council, all of our department heads and other elected officials, and we work as a team. Um, we are, all have a common goal um, to a, improve on and um, sustain the livability in Polk County. Polk County is a wonderful place to work and to, to raise your families, and we, we plan to keep it that way. Okay. Uh, let's see, I think it's uh, Steve. Steve, how would, um, what are the primary differences that set you apart from your opponents? Well, the most obvious is that I've worked in a city government where we haven't laid any employees off, and we've done budgeting in a way in which we have reserves right now. We're looking at adding some services and not laying any more employees off for the next couple of years. And so to me, that's the most obvious is that I've worked in a system that's learned the fiscal discipline to make sure that uh, the employees are treated fairly. Mm -hmm. Dan, what are the primary differences that set you apart from your opponents? B, I'm, I'm much more experienced in a wide, wider range, range of activities to include economic development, working infrastructure, utilities, highways, power grids, uh, water supplies, water treatment. I've done that uh, in, through this, my role as a city councilor, but also as a uh, retired Army Corps of Engineer officer. I've actually helped bring jobs to the area, both in the Edgewater area and other parts of Salem. The other thing that sets me apart is I enjoy great and strong working relationships with other governments uh, and, a num and businesses and a lot of individuals who care about the community. Great answers on all of those. The candidates will now um, each have one and a half minutes for a closing statement, and we'll begin that with Jennifer Wheeler. Again, I'd like to thank you for the invitation to be here today. Um, I am Jennifer Wheeler, your first woman uh, commissioner in Polk County, and I think that's significant in this year of the 100-year anniversary of uh, women's right to vote in Oregon. Um, I, I do have a very well-established relationship with um, our staff and my other commissioners. I, I have both of their endorsements. I believe that I'm the only candidate that can honestly say I have a working history with a past commissioners and a strong relationship with them as well. I do have the endorsement of four of, the, of our previous commissioners. I would like to, to, to believe that when I leave this office, not only will people look back and say Jennifer Wheeler was the first woman um, commissioner in Polk County, but that she was a darn good one, and we were, were glad that she was there. And sh when she left the office upon her retirement, she left the county a little bit better than, than she found it. Thank you. Steve Milligan, your closing statement. Sure. Um, the, you know, going back to the two, two main subjects in the uh, fiscal discipline and fiscal balance over the long run, what I want to do is implement some things. Uh, High-speed fiber is one of the pieces that we put in Monmouth and Independence that's really helped make a difference in uh, attracting businesses, attracting residents to the community. And I think that was a way that we built the tax base to really put ourselves on a good financial standing. I'd like to put that one in place. The other is I'd really like to see the public safety district put in place so that we can make sure that our communities are safe. I've lived a lot of different places throughout the United States and and I don't know of a more safe place that I've ever felt in living than in Polk County. Um, and I talk with a lot of people who, who move back to Polk County because of how safe a place it is and how good of a quality place it is to raise their kids. And that's what I want to keep in Polk County is that incredible quality of life. Thank you. Dan Clem, your clo a closing statement, please. Thank you, B. Yes, I too would like to thank League of Women Voters and CCTV for having this forum and being able to answer these questions. I would like to be known as the uh, Polk County Commissioners that got things done. I began uh, studying or er, learning for this job 30 years ago, 20 in the military, and the last 10 working with previous county commissioners to understand how you build relationships, how you bring Polk County together with the various parts and communities in Polk County to include the farming community and our wonderful wineries and really promote Polk County. I want to be the top cheerleader for uh, our agribusinesses, for the economic development potential of our cities. And at the end of the day, I would like to say what happened was unemployment went down and that property values went up. 
and through those increased property values, the cities and the county can enjoy the kind of stable long-term funding and not rely on federal revenues to have to do that or just having a fairly stable past. But these are trying times and I really believe that uh, with a nonpartisan vote in November that Polk County citizens are ready for change. They're ready for leaders who are worried about the issues and not necessarily labels or, or previous history. So I've been a performer. I've completed a number of key projects to create jobs and improve quality of life. I'd like to continue to do that for the county. Thank you to all three of you. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, I would like to thank each of you for your participation today. Thank you also to CCTV for providing the opportunity and to you, the listening public and watching public, for participating in your own citizenship. Candidates for Polk County Commissioner run for uh, on a nonpartisan basis. If one of the three candidates receives a majority of votes in the May 15th primary election, that person will become the Polk County Commissioner. However, if no one receives a majority of votes, the top two vote getters will advance to the November general election. Ballots are mailed out on next Friday, on Friday, April 27th, and you must mail your ballot back so that it's received by county election officials on or before May 15th, 8 o'clock in the evening. Voters registered by Tuesday, April 24th will be eligible to vote in this election. It's really important that you exercise your right to vote. Remember, your vote counts. Thank you.